Now we'll talk about resistors in parallel. And here's a picture showing a battery connected to three resistors that are in parallel. And the essential aspect of a parallel circuit is that the current divides. So imagine electric current. These are elect electrons coming out of this battery and flowing along this wire. And they get to this point right here, which we call a node. And the current divides. Some of the electrons go down this branch through R1, some of them go down this branch through R2, and some go here through R3. And the ones on R1 and R2, those branches come in from the sides, and they all rejoin right here at this node, and then they go back, the electrons go back to the battery. And the point is that the current splits. Some of it goes down one branch, some down another, and some down another. And you might not have three branches, you might have two, you might have four, you might have a hundred or a thousand. But the point about a parallel circuit is that the current divides. Now, as we did with the series circuits, we're going to look at this by, a, by an analogy. We're going to look at a hydraulic system, and we're also going to look at a little building and think about the gravitational system. So this is what we're going to do. Imagine water in this reservoir down here at the bottom and it gets pumped up to the top and lands in this reservoir up here and then it flows through these holes and turns these little water wheels so some of the water goes down here through water wheel number one and some goes through water wheel number two and some goes through water wheel number three now also look at this building here's an elevator over on the left side and the elevator carries people up to the top floor and there's only two floors in this building but there's three ways for these people to get down. Some of the people go down the stairs, and some people go down the ladder, and some people slide down this pole. And then all of them rejoin and come back here and go up the elevator, and the elevator takes them back up to the top. Now we'll look at these one at a time. First, let's go back to the hydraulic system. Remember that some of the water goes through water wheel one, and some goes through wheel two, and some goes through wheel three. And the amount going through each water wheel might be different. And in fact, the way it's drawn here, you can see that not much water is flowing here through the water wheel in the center. It's like there's a little tiny hole right there that the water's leaking out of. And a lot of water is flowing through here, and some other amount is flowing through there. The point is it's not the same. It could be the same, but it doesn't have to be. The amount going through each wheel can be different. We don't, might not know exactly how much water goes through each wheel, but we do know this. The total amount of water passing through all three water wheels has to equal the amount of water that's pumped up to the top by the pump. If the pump sends a thousand gallons of water up to the top every hour, then the number of gallons passing through water wheel number one plus the number passing through water wheel number two plus the number of gallons passing through wheel three must be a thousand also per hour. In the building the same is true. People ride the elevator up to the top floor and some of them come down the stairs, some come down the ladder, and some slide down the pole. And the total number of people descending in, in all those different ways has to equal the total number of people that rode up the elevator. And they won't necessarily be the same. You could have the same number of people going down each of those three paths, but not necessarily. The pole, for example, is really easy to get down. You just grab on and slide right down. The ladder and the stairs are a little more cumbersome, so we might expect more people to go down the pole. We might not know exactly how many go down each one, but we know that the total number of people going down the stairs plus the total number of people going down the ladder plus the total number of people going down the pole will equal the total number of people that the elevator took up to the top. And we can put numbers on that. If the elevator lifts 100 people up to the top every hour, then the total number of people descending by all three of those paths each hour must equal 100. Now take those concepts and come back to the circuit. In the circuit, charge is flowing. A certain amount of charge comes out of the battery every second. And that charge per second, that's what current is. And that charge flows around the circuit and then divides. And some of it goes through resistor 1, and some through resistor 2, and some through resistor 3. And different amounts of current might flow through the different resistors. It depends on the resistance. If one of the resistors has a very high resistance, then it will resist the current flow, and you'll have less current flow through that one. If one of the resistors has a very small resistance, then it won't resist as much, and more current will flow through that one. 
and we might not know exactly how much current flows through each resistor but we do know this the total current coming out of the battery is going to equal the current through resistor 1 plus the current through resistor 2 plus the current through resistor 3. The current in each of the three resistors has to add up to the total current. We could write that fact like this. For resistors in parallel, the current in all of the resistors adds up to the total. That's a fact that you can memorize, but again, far better than memorizing a fact like this would be understanding it. So try to understand this concept. The current in all of the resistors has to add up to the total current. What that means is this. If we have a certain amount of current flowing through this branch, and we'll call it I1, the current flowing through the first resistor, and a certain amount of current flowing through here, which we'll call I2, and a certain amount of current flowing through here, which we call I3, those three together have to add up to the I, the current coming out of the battery. So we can write it mathematically like this. We can say I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Now again, this is a specific case involving three resistors, but the concept is true in general. If we just had two resistors in parallel, the current in those two would add up to the total. If we had four resistors in parallel or more, the current in all of those would add up to the total. When you have resistors in parallel, the currents in all of them add up to the total current.